All right, another video for y'all today. And this one is gonna maybe push a few buttons on some people and um, say that I'm against their freedom. But let's see what I have to say about this article regarding third hand smoke and our children. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. This is coming from scitechdaily.com. Uh, I know it's a dot com, right? So I'm um, getting some news here. But they're talking about how the third hand smoke, almost all kids have tobacco on their hands, even in non smoking homes. So, how could this be? You know, we've even stopped cigarette smoking in restaurants, everyone's gonna say. Um, we should always allow people to smoke cigarettes in their um, houses and cars, and these are their places of residency, these are things that they own. We can't prevent them from. Uh, smoking in their own residency or in their own possession of cars because then they were taking away freedom. However, um, this is just something to be aware of. And I think it's uh, quite uh, quite concerning the fact that we even allow cigarettes to be so affordable or even people can purchase it with EBT. And we are so concerned about other health issues like viruses that we still sit there and smoke on cancer sticks. So, um, you know, so this article will go in and say pr pretty much how like every kid touches everything, right? You haven't seen a kid that doesn't like touch something, pick up something off the ground, eat it, um, slobber all over something, right? So put it down, pick it back up, put it back in their mouth. So they're always touching stuff, right? That's the way that they develop their um, and eye coordination. That's the way they develop senses for like sensorial pathways for like touch, feel, smell, taste, uh, what's good, what's not good to touch, what's not good to put in your mouth. That's just the way that they develop their brain, right? So totally fine for them to do it. However, what they're finding out is that 95% of children have some sort of tobacco residue, residue on their hands. And this is even in non-smoking homes and non-smoking residents. The reason why is because you know, like when you smoke cigarettes it re and even vapes, like, cause we don't know too much about vaping, right? So anything with tobacco, is, it sends off a residue, like a tar-like residue. And you can see it in a, in a home where people smoke when you take um, down walls, when you take down picture frames that have never moved, you see the black tar, right? So sometimes it's so thin that you can't really see it, but it's still there that you can touch it. So they um, studied 500, and four children, 97% of them had nicotine present on their hands, right? And 95% of those children were in non-smoking homes and home smoke bans still have nicotine on their hands. So again, maybe your kid goes to daycare, maybe your kid goes with you to the grocery store, you're touching shopping carts, touching, they touch someone else's clothes, they touch products, someone else that smokes touch that product um, and it cross contaminates. So the same way we cross contaminate with viruses, there's no way around it, right? You're always touching something. You can never be 100% um, sterile, um, nor should we try to be 100% sterile for viruses and bacteria, right? That's how we build up the immune system. However, we don't build an immunity to nicotine uh, residue, so this tobacco residue, right? We just don't, it actually just hurts us, which is why they're called cancer sticks, like the nickname, right? Um, and the amount of nicotine on children's hands also varied by income and race, right? So it's funny how the lower income people um, will have more um, smoking homes versus non-smoking homes. But yet you're saying you're low income and you're still somehow affording uh, cigarettes, which they get pretty expensive. Like if I live here in Florida, right? So um, there's the website that's about um, sales tax handbook and it's talking about like how much packs of cigarettes cost here in Florida. The average pack is $5.50 and the tax on it is $1.34 per pack, right? So the ranking is thir we're 33rd out of 51, from the highest to lowest, so out of the states. So um, I don't smoke, um, never will smoke. Um, so my opinions on it or I don't, like it. I don't know why we even uh, have it legal because uh, I understand why we have it legal for political reasons, for capital gain, uh, for profit margins. And it's an addictive substance that if people come off, they're going to be doing other sort of drugs, right? There's, it's hard to control um, or to, to manage like the addiction uh, properties of nicotine for someone who has been on it for a while. 
And that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about that nicotine on my kids' hands and they're touching their mouth and they're eating, eating because they're not always going to wash their hands, right? Um, so I don't know the like the, the issue that we'd come across in brain development uh, with children who, who are around uh, places that have a high amount of nicotine uh, residue on items, on clothing, on carpets, on floors, people that, that move to house to house, condo to condo, um, rent or like uh, lease cars and people still smoke in the cars. It's hard to get rid of that, that, that tar, right? So it is damaging our children's lungs particularly and most likely their brain too. It's somehow affecting that. But I'm more particular about lungs. And so if you're still with me for this, <clears throat> to see what I'm, what I'm proposing. I'm proposing the fact that um, a we kind of fix the the lower income from always being the high, the I guess the high uh, consumers of cigarettes smoking by increasing taxes and and taking away the EBT ability to to purchase cigarettes. Right. Um, that's just, should be the way it is. Um, if you want to offer EBT, then offer it with nicotine gum or some type of, uh, make some type of like medical drug that can help you with weaning off of your nicotine amount, right? So helping people come off of it. Now, the second thing I propose is that we focus more on children's nutrition. So, hey, what vitamins, what minerals do, will help my lungs develop? Will help my children's lungs develop? Will help them stay say cleaner, right? Reduce the risk of cancer, reduce the risk of mucal um, buildup. Um, so really like vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, and selenium. So those are the six that are proposed. Vitamin A, vitamin A is important for the development of the avial um, growth and, and maturity. So that's how we exchange oxygen. Vitamin E is a very powerful antioxidant that's been shown to help with protecting the lungs in particular. And that's gonna be even um, in articles from cardiovascular health, so centers of res respiratory health, uh, they recommend vitamin E is, and it protects against the oxidative stress, particularly from the toxins and free radicals that are in your lung tissue. So vitamin E may help with uh, removal from some of those those like um, toxins and, and um, prevent further damage. Um, vitamin D, again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be powerful antioxidants, um, antioxidant uh, properties. Um, it's, it is not a vitamin, right? It's, it's more of a, a cholesterol, like a, a backbone. And so it has the ability to, um, to help with metabolic response within the body. So building, breaking down, um, exchanging, uh, converting, things like that. So uh, it can help with the development alongside with vitamin A, vitamin E um, for lungs and alveola and the mucal lining. So supplementing with them, it's going to be great. As far as the doses go, you'd always start off on the lower dose of the RDA for children. For adults, we can kind of go up as high depending on like your lung um, uh, issues that you would have, like how much inflammation you would have in your lungs, because you can go up to a thousand IUs of vitamin E for a short period of time and then back off. Same thing with vitamin D, you can go up to 10,000 IUs, back off. Vitamin A, you can go up to 20, 25,000 um, IUs and back off. Um, and that would be also dependent upon your blood work, which you can always get to see the, the serum levels. Now, children, you should definitely make sure that they're eating, um, you know, avocados, spinach, salmon, uh, egg yolk, fish, um, letting them play outside to help with the vitamin D synthesis and uh, also keeping them physically active because the more that they actually use their lungs to breathe and do cardiovascular activities, the better off their lungs are going to be um, in strength. And their diaphragm will be in strength. Um, less body fat accumulation is also going to help with reducing the amount of toxin buildup within the body. So all in all, my recommendations Definitely feeding your ch children with foods that are going to be better um, uh, equipped with vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin D, selenium, magnesium, zinc. So again, um, supplementing with those at your local supplement store or 
Um, also getting physical activity outside to make sure that they are actually using their lungs, moving their bodies, getting that cardiovascular health in. And this not only applies for children, but it also applies for you adults, you parents, you need to set the example for your children, what they see, what they do, right? So leaving it there, that's my opinions on it. Um, yeah, it's kind of um, uh, kind of a little bit of different um, topic, but I think that it's it's silly for us to avoid this this topic in face of all this other re um, destroying of our freedoms uh, due to this coronavirus. So you totally forget about things that actually harm us and have been harming us since you know I don't even know how early this has been going twenties tens um so um and it's legal it, it just it baffles me and if you're not upset at this um then you kind of need to rethink your life leaving it there and like share comment subscribe let me know in the comment below what do you want to do about smoking and the effects of smoking and how it's harming your health and what do you do about it what do you do to help your children all right